how many people are under 25 years old? Great. So 60% of Nigeria's population is under 25 years old. And the whole world actually is focused on Africa, specifically on Nigeria as the next driver for development, whether it's in education or in healthcare. A quick question, how many people here are in policy? Policy, with the government, with um, think tanks? Okay, so just a few people. I think what is very important to take away at the end of my session, what we're gonna be talking about is healthcare and machine learning. But what I want you to take away at the end of this session is the importance on the policy side and as individual people to think about healthcare primarily as a combination of three things. Firstly, your intelligence, what you know about what to do to make your life better. And secondly, your mental and physical states. Those three things are important. And you can only achieve full mental health care if you care for your community, if you avoid meat and alcohol, and if you eat mostly uh, non-processed food, natural foods, uh, fruits and vegetables. So these are the core values that I want everybody here to take away from this session, uh, primarily. And then we'll then go on into the core piece of what I'm going to be discussing next. Um, in technology, many times we tend to focus a lot on the tools for getting the people. And so I always like to start off with the values and essentially the people. That is the first thing. So let's go on into the next slide where we have the agenda for our discussion today. I want to take you over the next um, 13, mi 13 minutes on four steps to my presentation. Um, the very first one is understanding the issue of fake drugs. Uh, the second is exploring our solution at RxAll. And then the third is understanding AI and what I see as the big opportunities for young people, all of those who raise their hands under 25 years, for you to begin to explore. And then finally, uh, we'll do a summary, and then I will tell you what sort of readings would help you on that journey. Right, so um, at the, please go back to the next slide. Um, at the heart of my presentation today is that I want you to go away with three things. Firstly is that focus on the people. Technology is only a tool. That's the first thing. The second thing is focus on your social impact. And that's why when I started I said look at what is your community service and what is your defined purpose in life. In healthcare, those two things are important to your mental state. If you're not serving other people and if you don't have a defined purpose in life, you will not be very healthy mentally. And then, no, go back, stay on the same slide. And then very, on the very last thing is avoid the pursuit of wealth and money as the primary goal. Your goal should be to develop solutions that help to improve the lives of other people. And by pursuing that, what would end up for you, if you want, is wealth. This is the key thing. So now let's start our journey over the next 10 minutes. And here we're going to understand what is Africa's fake drug problem. Next slide. I grew up in Nigeria, and this was about 15 years ago in Ibadan, where I was in a coma for 21 days because of a fake drug. Somebody decided that the amount of money they would make from selling a fake pack of sabutamol tablets was more important than my life. I want that to sink in, and that's why when I started this presentation, I have emphasized that true wealth and true happiness in life is focused on the social impact you make over the course of your journey on Earth. Now, if you look at the next slide, I was lucky to have survived, but in reality, there are over one million people across the world who die because of fake medicines. Next slide. I would not assume, no, the slide before this, I would not assume that everybody understands what fake drugs really means. And so I'll just define um, what the um, key things are around the fake drugs issue, right? So if you move on to the next slide, we would look here at the next slide here saying specifically that falsified drugs are those drugs that people think is actually what it's not. So somebody has actually defined it as 
say, um, I, I'm claiming to be what I'm not, either in terms of the source of the drug or in terms of the uh, packaging or in terms of what was actually used to make it. That's what we call a falsified drug. A substandard drug is a drug that is not in composition or in spec specification. So, for example, I'm a manufacturer in Lagos. NAVDAC has told me that I have to prepare paracetamol to have 500 milligrams of an active agent. I decided I want to make more money, so I put on 200 milligram in there, right? Even though I haven't lied about specifically my source or I put in uh, uh, um, the composition in there, in reality, that is actually a substandard drug because I have not met the specification for that drug. So keep those two categories in as we go forward. I'm go just going to refer to these two things as fake drugs, but in, in reality, we define these two under these two segments. Next slide. And as I said, I was lucky um, to have survived the coma from a falsified drug. There are over one million people across the world, more than 300,000 people in Africa every year who die because of fake drugs. Every year. Let that sink in. It's, it's a lot of people to die because of falsified drugs. And um, next slide. And specifically, Africa suffers a lot, right? Suffers a lot from this problem. We have a situation where 30% um, of all the medicines in many parts of Africa are falsified. Over 160,000 children every year die because of um, complications from antibiotic drugs because those drugs are out of specification, right? So it's a huge problem. $52 million has to be spent on repeat therapy on medicines. So you have malaria, you go on and then you actually get um, a malaria pill. You don't feel better after three, four days. You go to the doctor, the doctor does a blood test. In reality, you still have the parasite in you. You have to repeat the test. This is it. It's economic cost and it's actually the impact on the number of people who die because of this problem. Next slide. And Africa is an easy prey, primarily because of the policy environment. There's also the big issue of non-universal healthcare coverage. So 90% of spend is out of pocket. And um, legal repercussions for distributing bad drugs is very weak. So how many people know that the fake drugs industry, you would actually make 16 times profit to somebody who actually decides to distribute narcotics or cocaine? It's very lucrative, and if you're caught, you only end up paying on average about $5,000 as the fine. So this is why many people are seeing Africa as an easy dump for fake medicines, and why we are facing this huge problem. Next slide. Now, we all know about the SDGs, and this big SDG go around healthcare and well-being, all right, cannot be achieved if people actually don't have access to certified high-quality medicines. And so that's why I'm painting this whole picture, that there's no way we can have healthcare, there's no way we can be healthy as a people if our medicines are not safe. Next slide. And so primarily, what we have thought about in the technology space, uh, I qualified as a pharmacist um, before going on into the business and then technology. Um, we've always thought about things primarily around policy, around the healthier space, either pharmacy or pharmacy distribution and regulation. But one of the big things that we have done at Arex is think what can be done outside of policy. Next slide. And so we will move on into the second section here. And in this section, I would explain to you what RxOl is, what our solution is, and our evolution. Next slide. So here, this is a very busy slide, but it's important because, as I said, I don't want to assume the technical knowledge is at par across board. But one thing to take away from this slide is that there is no true artificial intelligence today. Right? Um, what we call AI is essentially a metaphor for machine intelligence. But if you look at the first definition around na what natural intelligence is, it consists of three things, right? Cog cognitive abilities. So as the last speaker mentioned, those are things around um, numerical calculations, things around creativity. But even more important, that makes, what makes us human are two other things, and that's our emotional and social intelligence. 
machines haven't achieved that level yet. Maybe in the future that would happen, but today, we only use artificial intelligence as a metaphor for machine learning, which in reality is just a very um, smart way of doing numerical summations and calculators based on logic at scale. So that's the first thing I want you to uh, take away, or the key thing I want you to take away from this slide. Next slide. Um, here, uh, just defining what a simple algorithm is. Right? It's important for me to do these definitions because RxOl is primarily a machine learning platform that helps you do the testing of a drug quality using your mobile phone. And what is an algorithm? It's just a simple rules-based system that helps you determine, based on logic, what an expected outcome should be. So for example, if somebody shows up in front of you with fever or headache, right, you say, OK, give uh, paracetamol. Now, if the person says, I have fever as well, um, you find out what, what is the cost of the fever. Is it malaria, or is it like a viral cold? And then you can then decide what else to give. So this is, this is just a sample of what an algorithm is. Next slide. And at the heart of this is that once we know these technical definitions, we talk about RxOl uh, in the introduction. It was said it was a multi-million dollar company at the moment. But if you look through the steps over the four steps that we have iterated the product, we've always kept the people at the heart of it. That's the key. It's always been the people. We want to save people from falsified and substandard drugs. And so th what that has meant is that we have focused on our social impact and we've iterated the tools until now we have decided that machine learning is the key tool to use to implement. But we've never dive from the fact that the people are the core, um, pre the, the core set of the solution for which we're building around. Next slide. And so currently, um, this is one of our customers out in Myanmar. And I've put in this slide here to show you, to show all the young people who are here, that you can sit in Ibadan, you can sit in Lagos, you can sit anywhere in Nigeria and create a solution that can be used across the world. Do not be limited by your environment or by what you see as your constraints. You who is sitting here, each one person actually has a solution that the rest of the world requires. These are customers that are based out in Myanmar. How many people know the country called Myanmar? Yeah, so few people. It's in Southeast Asia. They are using our solution. Next slide. Um, here, it's supposed to be a very short video, but um, we would skip it. And in this video, we're essentially showing how the platform works. So next slide. And I'll just explain it here because we can't go through the video because of time. What it is is that we provide you a very small hardware device. It's what we call an IoT device. And this device peers in with your mobile application. And so it is then possible to actually do the test of a drug to find out if that drug actually has what it should have according to the specifications of a national regulator. So at the moment, we're mostly focused on deploying the solution with national regulators and hospital systems. But ultimately, we intend that this will be available with every single household across the world. Next slide. So we obviously have gotten a number of certifications. Um, so there's the ISO certification, the CE certification from Europe as well. Next slide. And I think one of the big uh, awards we won recently, for which many people might know me, is the Hello Tomorrow Award, wherein we were um, selected out of 4,500 deep tech startups from across 119 countries. Thank you. And specifically, I want you to know, and that's why I'm trying to encourage and inspire those young people who are here, the core of this technology was developed while I was at the University of Ibadan in 2008. So that's one thing to know. So for each and everybody who is here, I want you to know that do not think that what you are now is a definition of where you will be in the future. OK, so next slide. Um, we'll just go past this. Move on to the next slide. We won't be able to cover this. Next slide. Yes, yeah, so let's go on to the section three. Yes, and then move on to the next slide. Here. Um, I wanted to define what learning means and what knowledge means. 
the two separate things. Knowledge is an, is, a, is an encoding or a record of what we have learned. Next slide. And here I've just written a simple logic around how AI is developed, right? So when you have a typical program, a typical program is saying, I have data, I have a set of instructions that I want, and then that data is processed with a set of instructions to give a specific outcome. With AI, it's a bit different. With AI, it's like I want this expected outcome. This is the data. And then I put that together, and I let the AI or the machine learning program think through the best way to get there. right? And so this is what I've sort of defined in this simple AI that you might see at the back. Uh, next slide. Next slide. So um, here, we're looking at applications. And primarily anywhere you can actually um, replace humans right, with a logic-based system of rules that requires a lot of repetition, you can apply AI in there. And so we'll quickly go through two, uh, three, meta three um, applications in healthcare where you can use AI today. So the opportunity across Africa is in the space of primary care diagnosis. We have too few doctors across Nigeria, right? With AI, you can actually create a system where people can meet with a doctor, an AI doctor, get their diagnosis and get the prescription. Very easy application area for you to go into. Next. Another big area is in radiology, where you have your x-rays, your CT, MRI scans. You need somebody to go through that. You can pass that through an AI system to get a very quick diagnosis that is sent to a doctor, and then you get to your prescription. And then um, one last area here is in drug discovery. Right? As a pharmacist, this is one area that thrills me a lot. You can decide, OK, I want these different functional groups from different molecules, and this is the outcome that I want to apply. So these are three areas where we expect young people here to go into going forward. And then um, next slide, just some. As I said, the key thing is to focus on the human problem. Start with the humans. What is the human problem? Define your theory of change. What is the social impact that I want to achieve at scale? And how do I get there? Lastly, uh, how can I create a repeatable, replicable, rules-based system to make this happen? Next slide. And so this will be my recommended readings. In our own image, explores the anthropological origin of AI. Very important book. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.